we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock. You who are Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock at your right hand. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O God, our Father, since you have set forth the way of life for us in your beloved Son, we confess with shame our slowness. Slow, slowness to learn of him, our failure to follow his guidance, and our reluctance to bear the cross. We acknowledge that we are by nature sinful and unclean and know in our hearts that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Forgive us for all that is amiss in our lives as we continually break your commands. Forgive us that we have not always been fruitful plantings in your vineyard. Have mercy on us and forgive us, O Lord. Upon this, your confession and by the command of my, our Lord, I, a called and ordained servant of Christ, forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you gave your son into the hands of sinful men who killed him. Forgive us when we reject your unfailing love and grant us the fullness of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. So as we begin our new month here in October, uh, we have a new memory verse uh, from John's Gospel, the 17th chapter. Just reminded of the truth that is in God's word and how it has sanctified us. Uh, and as Christ has been sent into this world, we too have been sent uh, to proclaim this truth. Uh, and so let us just take this reminder uh, from John's gospel um, this month. Uh, just what we are called to do, to talk about the truth uh, of him. And so let us say that twice this morning. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into this world. God sent them into the world. John 17, 17. And one more time. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into this world. So I have sent them into the world. John 17, 17. Our Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. And he looked for, gra for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and briars and thorns shall grow up. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it, 
For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed, for righteousness, but behold, an outcry. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading comes from Philippians chapter 3, verses 4b through 14. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness, under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness of from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made, it, has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. It's time I invite all children to come and join me for a children's message this morning. Good morning, everyone. How are we this morning? Good. Good. All right. I like the hat. Do I get to wear one tomorrow? Okay. Well, um, I, I'm going to need your help today. Uh, and, and I have a, a person here. Um, did I do a good job drawing him? Good. Thank you. And, and what do I have here? A heart. And, and a heart can be stuff that, that's most important to you. Like, I, I love these things, okay? So I, I want to help you. I want you to help me here. What are things that are most important to you? Okay, now I know that Jesus is the most important thing, but we're going we're gonna to wait a little bit for that, okay? All right? What are some things that, that are most important to you? Family? Family? Good, good. What else might be important to you? Okay. Your dog, family. Um, what, what do I have here? Children, and, and what are they playing with? Toys. toys. Do you think toys are pretty important? Absolutely. Um, so we'll put that there. Uh, what else might be important? Sports. sports. Okay. I like to play sports. Okay, so we like that. <laughs> not in this children's message, they're not. You're, you're jumping ahead. What else might be important? Who likes to go to school? Good, good. We, we, like, we like school. Okay. Um, this is for the Talarud. What might be important? The Vikings. Can you believe that I'm doing this, Tenley? This is just for you guys. I don't like them, so I put a whole, I shoot darts at them. What else might be important? This is the truly the most important thing, right? Is this a bad word? Okay. In this word, this is a word of praise at our house. So, that's a bad. now now notice here that that what kind of happened to our heart? It got what? It kind of got covered up by, by all these things. And, and are all these things good? Yeah, absolutely. They, they are good. Maybe, maybe this isn't good, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, this is not, 
this is really not good. But, <laughs> but, but what should be the most important thing? Jesus. Jesus. And, and what? In the Bible. And, and sometimes we uh, allow other things to, to take over what truly is most important. And in a little bit, you're going to hear a story about um, uh, some men who, who let things of this world kind of get more important. Uh, and they, they wanted things for their own. And, and they forgot that, that Jesus and, and God is the, the most important thing. And so they let other things of this world kind of take over their heart. But we need to push that stuff aside and allow what to be the very most important thing. Jesus. And so, yes, all these things are good, but we need to remember that, that Jesus is the most important thing, that he should be the center of our lives, what uh, dwells in our heart the most, and um, not let other things distract us. And so we thank God uh, that he sent Jesus uh, to remind us of the forgiveness and life that we have uh, through him, because uh, we sometimes allow other things to get more important. Uh, and we need to ask for forgiveness. And so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son uh, who came to this world so that we can be forgiven. And let us allow him to always be the center of our lives, uh, that we think about him all the time um, and let, not let other things distract us uh, from you and, and your love for us. And this we ask in your name. Amen. All right, you may head back to your seat and a, a parting gift for you, Tal Tyler. Do you want that? No? You want to put that in your room? Shoot darts at it? Okay. And out of respect for the Holy Gospel, I invite you to stand and let us say the verse together. Hallelujah. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. That's what the world is doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Hear another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants, and went into another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, Thy, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When, therefore, the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? And they said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken into pieces. And when it falls on anyone, he will crush him. When the chief priests and Pharisees heard this parable, they perceived that he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet. This is the gospel of the Lord. We continue with our next hymn, Christ is our cornerstone.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is our cornerstone, the most important thing in our lives. Be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. Now, certainly when we look and read through text, um, we sometimes have to figure out what this text is not saying, what it might not be about. And I think this is one of those texts that we need to first um, get squared away about what this text is not about. This text is not about an unfruitful vineyard. It's not about a vineyard that bears the wrong kind of fruit. And it's not about the people of God that fail to bear the fruit that it should. And certainly we are not like the tenants of this parable that doesn't bear the fruit of God. There is nothing wrong with this vineyard. And so no, this parable is not about what happens when you come. Now no, this parable is what it means when you, become, when you come between the owner and the vineyard. Don't come between the owner and its vineyard, his vineyard. For Jesus tells this parable, and as he told this parable, and as the Pharisees and chief priests hear this parable, they realize at the end that this parable is about them. Now certainly the, par- the, the, the chief priests and, and Pharisees probably at one time had good intentions about sharing the good news of God. They studied the word. They knew what was coming. But when Jesus finally comes, they fail to recognize him as the Messiah. They want to make sure that they get rid of him and all those people that share that view of who Jesus is. Get rid of the prophets. For we see in this parable that that there is a vineyard, and it belongs to the owner, and this owner cares for it. He loves it. And so he sent workers into his vineyard to take care of it, produce fruit. But certainly they begun to want the vineyard for themselves. And so anyone that's going to come in between the vineyard and them, that inheritance, they want to get rid of them. Even if that means the son of the owner when he comes. For they are getting in the way of the owner and the vineyard. This is what this parable is all about. For we see from this parable that there is a warning and there's also an invitation. Certainly it reminds us not to get in the way of God and his vineyard, his creation. Now many of us think that this won't ever happen to us. We would never get in the way of God. But then look at Peter saying that he would never fall away from Christ. Even if everyone else fell away, he would stand right next to him. We see that Peter eats those words. For when it came to be the time for him to say that he belongs to Jesus, he denies him three times. We need to wake up. Watch out. Make sure that the gospel is the chief message that we are living by. So how do we do this? 
Well, it starts with when the good news of Jesus is the center of our lives. Remembering it's about Jesus and his mission for us, for his church. And it's not about us. We live in a world, a fallen world. And this world tries to do everything it can to pull us away from that mission. Pull us away from Christ being at the center of our lives. We have to remind ourselves each and every day to look to Jesus. For our lives should always be about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. And certainly I was reminded of this this past week. For I was coming into work on Wednesday, the day after that wonderful presidential debate. And normally when I come into the office, my radio is off. It allows me to have time to to get centered, have quiet time with God. Well, my radio was, was on. So I, on Tuesday night, I went to pick up Megan from gymnastics. We were listening to the presidential debate. And so when I was coming in, they were rehashing the presidential debate about who won or who was right, who was wrong, what was going on with the two candidates. Certainly I was flustered, trying to figure out what kind of world we are living in. Just like that, when I came into church, I was not in the right frame of mind. I was angry, I was frustrated. Thankfully, the first email that popped up was, a blog that my friend had written. He had written it that morning, saying that that evening, last evening, Tuesday night, instead of watching the presidential debate, he went out and walked his neighborhood. He prayed for his neighborhood. He prayed for the country that we live in. But as he was walking, he saw all the people tuned in to the presidential debate. And he said... People need to realize where their focus needs to be. Not on what the candidates have to say or aren't saying, but focus on the words of Jesus. And so he is going to spend the next five weeks before the election going through with his congregation the words of Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. And that's exactly what we're going to do in our Thursday morning Bible study. Except at the rate that we go, it'll probably be next year by the time we get through Matthew 5 and 7, through 7. But that was just what I needed. To be refocused. To be focused on the words of Jesus. To allow Jesus to be at the center of my life. For the many things of this world can get us distracted, can get us angry, frustrated, or scratching our heads. That's why we need Jesus. It was that reminder. And then walking through this text of today that reminded me to be focused and centered on Jesus. Don't allow other things of this world, not even the Green Bay Packers, cowards, I'm saying this, to come in between Jesus and me. This parable offers us an invitation an invitation that we have been grafted into this vineyard of the owner. A vineyard that is loved and cared by, by the owner. He will not let anything, 
anything come in between him and his vineyard. For in the parable, there are wicked tenants that come and think that they have won. They have gotten rid of the servants that have come into the vineyard to get what they need. And even the son, they have killed the son. They think they have won. They will get their inheritance. But as we know, that son does not stay dead. He rises, wins. He defeats sin and death. That son preserves the vineyard. And it is that son that centers us to what we are to do as his people. For when we look at the son, we see the cross, the empty tomb, his resurrection, the love that he has for each and every one of us. For in our baptism, we then are reminded of being grafted into that family. In that baptism, we are given new life. Each and every day, we are given new life. Today, we will be reminded when we come and partake in his supper that he continually feeds us. He feeds us with forgiveness. The promise of the hope of life with him. We are God's plan and we are his joy and his delight. So I encourage you to put your roots down in that vineyard of the owner who is God. Let the owner care for you. Let God's center be your center. It is then that you can go out and work in the vineyard. When your roots are planted, have that foundation in his vineyard. Be reminded that God will let let nothing, nothing come between you and and him. Remember, it's about Jesus. 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 For he will sustain you. He will nurture you. But him, and only him, be your center. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We now continue in our service by joining together and confessing the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us stand if you are able. And we confess, I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. a couple of prayer requests to add uh, to our, our list. Uh, we remember uh, the family of Helen Krabinoff. Helen passed away on Friday, uh, so she is resting with her Savior now. Uh, and so funeral is up in the air. Uh, her daughter uh, was, uh, went to the hospital on Friday morning uh, with a possibility of surgery coming up uh, for some blockage. So Uh, Once I know of the date for her funeral, I will let you know. But we continue uh, to keep them in uh, in our prayers. Uh, We also uh, lift up uh, Judy, uh, Olive Lean's uh, daughter, who will have uh, surgery, uh, heart surgery, uh, this coming Thursday. Uh, And we also uh, uh, lift up uh, Brody, uh, who is uh, a 
a boy uh, that is in Pelican Rapids uh, who has uh, a rare form of leukemia. And so we pray for um, healing and strength uh, for them. And so we just lift them all up in our hearts uh, and our prayers uh, as well. And so let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the whole Christian community around the world that as people united in faith, we are emboldened to witness to the golden good news that is ours in Christ Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord pray for all nations of the earth, that there be times of peace for our own nation, that it would seek to bring that which is good and God-pleasing, and for our own communities and neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord pray. We pray for the faithfulness to carry out our callings with faithfulness, living each day with hope and confidence as we await the time of great and glorious of the great and glorious final harvest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have For the needs that are specific, specially known to us at this time, including health and family concerns, situations of disability or bereavement, and the changes that are part of human life, especially those in this congregation, for Marlis, Ryan, Wayne, Sam, Barb, Karen, Jim, Betty, Sarah, Dawn, Chase, Robert, Joanne, Cody, Judy, and Brody. We also lift up the family of Helen Krabinoff, who passed away this past week. Give them the certain hope and promise of resurrection, that we will be together again at that final harvest. We also pray for our president and the first lady as they deal with the coronavirus. Uh, give him uh, strength and um, just healing uh, that he can continue uh, to lead our nation. And so we lift them and our whole nation up as we battle this pandemic. Uh, you are the source of healing and let us just be centered around you. With assurance that our petitions are heard, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, you give us so much to rejoice in, especially those who celebrate a birthday this week. For Eric, Melvin, Jaden, Nicholas, Isabella, and Emily. We also thank you for your continued blessings on marriages, especially to Ben and Tara, who celebrate another year of marriage this week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we offer up our offerings and tithes. Uh, just a reminder that if you didn't pick them up when you came in, uh, we will be celebrating communion this morning, uh, and so our individual kits uh, are out there. So if you didn't grab one, you can do that during offering. Um, and so if you didn't put in your offering uh, when you came in, you can certainly do that as you leave. Uh, the offering plates are back there. And so let us just uh, focus on uh, these words uh, during this uh, reading of uh, what it means to, to know God.
So I invite you to stand if you are able as we prepare to come to the Lord's table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. We bless you for having planted us in your vineyard and for keeping us in your abiding care. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. And therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We give thanks to you for having sent your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to be our Redeemer, saving us from the power of sin, death, and the devil. Invited by your grace and made righteous by the sacrifice of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, we come to your table with gratitude and joy. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood that we daily grow as people of faith and peace looking forward to the eternal feast yet to come in your heavenly kingdom. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup. After supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them and said, Take and drink. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated. I invite you to take the individual communion cup kits and peel away the, the side of the bread. And then take and eat. This is Christ's true body given and shed for you. And you may peel away the wine side. And then take and drink. This is Christ's true blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now having received Christ's true body and blood, may it strengthen you and preserve you and your faith until life everlasting depart in our risen Lord's peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. We now continue with our communion hymn. 
uh, just as I am without one plea. I invite you to stand if you are able as we join together in prayer. And let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have again welcomed us at your table and have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in your glorious kingdom. Strengthen us through this blessed gift that we live with assurance and confidence, free from every fear. Grant that your Holy Spirit enlighten us with his gifts that we be people who rejoice in your promises and live to your glory. Sanctify and keep us in the one true faith throughout this earthly life until we come at last to the company of saints and angels in eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. We're joined together in saying our ascending prayer. Uh, once again, at the beginning of a new month, this is the same prayer that each congregation in the Minnesota North District will be saying. Just be reminded of the call that we have been given to go and tell people about Jesus, to have him be the center of their lives. And so we pray, gracious Father, we live in difficult times. All around us, people are on edge. Lord, we know someone who needs a word of encouragement, a message of hope. Open up an opportunity for us to share these words of hope, forgiveness with someone we know who needs you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. You are my rock, my fortress, and for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. But I trust in you, O Lord, I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Love the Lord, all your saints. The Lord preserves the faithful. Be strong and let your heart take courage. All you who wait for the Lord. And now receive our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. We conclude with our final song, All My Life You Have Been Faithful.
You may be seated for just a couple announcements. <laughs> just a couple things uh, to bring your attention to. Uh, October 18th, uh, following Bible study, is that true, council members? Uh, we will have our uh, voter, uh, quarterly voters meeting. Where we'll also uh, be doing elections uh, and talk about budget for the coming year. So mark that on your calendar, October 18th, uh, following Bible study at 1045, we will have um, our quarterly voters meeting, and I'll be in the fellowship hall uh, for that. Uh, we will also be doing it uh, via Zoom, uh, and we can vote via Zoom as well uh, for elections. Uh, so if you can't make it, uh, a link will be sent out for that, so you can kind of follow along with that uh, as well. I'll uh, Just a reminder, too, that uh, Thursday morning, our Bible study has been uh, up and running again. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, looking at Matthew 5 through 7. Um, and so come and join us. Uh, for that, that's at 10 a.m. in the fellowship hall. Uh, so please come and join us for that. And I think that's all that, that I have. Um, there's one other thing. Also, uh, if you are wanting to, to look, uh, to find a way to help out uh, Ryan and Tessa, uh, a kind of food calendar has been set up. Uh, that we can get you that link. Uh, it's been on our Facebook page. Uh, but if you're looking for ways to help them out, they are looking for, for meals. Uh, they like spaghetti and meatballs. Um, pork chops and steak are, are another thing that they like. Um, and tacos uh, or any gift cards uh, to restaurants. Culver's is a favorite uh, from what I am hearing uh, from, from them. Uh, so if you're looking for ways to help them out, um, you can either get them to me, I can get them to uh, them, or I'm sure Bob and Lynn can help out with that too. Um, but uh, I know next week, uh, and this week, I think they're taken care of. Um, but uh, if you're looking for ways to help, uh, let me know, and I can kind of hook you up with that. Uh, so, it's also the link is also um, printed in the bulletin. So if you just type that in, um, but if you have access to our Facebook page, that's a much easier way to do that. Um, Sunday school teachers, just a quick reminder: we have a short meeting today after Sunday school. Um, youth in grades six through twelve, our hayride is tonight, and it is going to be chilly. Um, so we'll have um, a fire and we'll make s'mores, so that'll be great. Um, ladies, our book club has restarted, so if you would like to join us, um, the information is in the newsletter that was sent out um, this last weekend, or I sent an email to you. If you didn't get that, um, let me know and I can get you that information. Our first book club is Monday, October 19th at 7 o'clock, and we will be meeting here at church. I think that's all I have. Perfect. All right, uh, we'll have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, the weather looks great uh, this coming week, so get out and enjoy God's creation. Um, and just be reminded uh, to, uh, in everything that is going on in this world, be centered uh, in Jesus, uh, his word. Uh, don't let anything distract you from that. Allow him to, to keep you at the forefront of, of his life. And be reminded that you are part of his vineyard, uh, that he cares for you, he loves you, um, and you are grafted and, and rooted in that. And so... Uh, hold on to that. And so have a blessed rest of your week and God's peace.